So Diana never knew we were making this spare. I didn't want to worry her. So we never showed it to her. We never talked about it. It was complete secret. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Emanuel, and we're here in my studio in Little Venice. And we're here today to talk about the recreation of the spare dress, or the dress that never was, as I like to call it. I was a bit neurotic at the time of the making of the royal wedding dress and I thought what happens if somebody breaks in and steals the dress or something spills or there's a fire or it gets stolen. I wanted to be prepared for any emergency and we set about making this other dress not exactly like the royal wedding dress because to try and recreate that would have just taken too long and we were a tiny little studio so you know we were very busy. We also did the pink dress that Lady Diana she was then wore at the pre-wedding ball which was a shocking pink dress, very sexy, plunged neckline, slashed up the thigh, and that had never been seen, ever. And so that was another one I wanted to recreate, to give a picture of Diana as she was at that time. She wasn't some little shy, shrinking violet, you know, she really wanted to show off her new figure then. In order to do this dress, I had to not only remember, go back in time through my memories, but I also found these photographs we took at the time of the making of the original spare dress because I wanted to get it as accurate as possible and make it in a way that we would have made it then. I mean, I was very tempted to say, oh, I want to get a shape a little bit different. I want to do this and accentuate this. And but I, didn't, I thought I've got to be true to the original design. We used part of the pattern for her pink dress that she wore at the pre-wedding ball which had slim sleeves, and then we added the big skirt. So this fabric is as identical as is possible to the actual fabric used for the spare dress, and we had to reconstruct it. And I worked with Forsty Woolley, which is a, a, a company in Switzerland. It wasn't in their archives, so we had to gather up all things that were similar and put it together, using all the little thumbnails as reference for it. The scallops were really, really important in the creation of this dress because it was a big feature of the dress. There's just 14 metres of this fabric in the world. The only place you can see it really is on this spare dress. It took about um, two months, I think, me and Olga focusing entirely on this dress, but I didn't want to rush it and we did it gently. I am happy with how this turned out. It's what I had in my head at the time, but now we've done everything, you know, we've put all the edging on here, done the embroidery in particular. It's the same little pearls, same little sequins as you would have seen on the Royal Wedding Dress as well. And I did it all myself. So although it never made it to get on to Diana, this is how it would have looked if it had been totally finished. The original one is just gone because after we realised that we wouldn't have to use it and the royal wedding dress was there and Diana wore it, it ended up on some sample rail somewhere because it was unfinished. Rene Plant, who has a, a beautiful Diana museum in Los Angeles, and she asked uh, if I would do this recreation for her, for her museum. So the replica is the only one that exists. We were contacted by Vogue magazine who were doing a shoot and it was on a celebrity and they didn't want to say who it was for but they wanted to know if we had something romantic with a high neckline and as it happened we did have something and we sent it over there and then we discovered much later on that it was a shoot by Lord Snowden of Lady Diana to announce her engagement and we didn't know that at the time. Apparently she loved it and she asked who had designed it and she got in touch with us. I was amazed really because I thought, you know, there's so many more experienced designers around when we actually got the commission because Diana phoned us up and I took the phone call myself and she said, would you do me the honor of making my wedding dress? And I was in a serious fitting with a bride and uh, I had to run out of the room. I think the client thought we were well, I was crazy. I had to make some excuse like my brother's had a baby or something. And that's how it all started, really. Well, when we first met Diana, she was, I'd say, a 12 to 14 size, English size. She was sort of chubby, a little bit. Not, not fat or anything, but she had like a rounded face and she was cuddly. And then as days went by, and after we'd started making the wedding dress, she suddenly lost a lot of weight. I mean, a lot. Her waist went to a 23 inch waist 
and she looked like a model. When Diana came in for a fitting, there would be hundreds of people outside waiting to spot her. Everybody wanted to know what the dress was gonna look like. We had two security men, Jim and Bert, who would come in at night and guard the place. And the actual wedding dress was kept in a metal cabinet that was locked. Our seamstresses, who were absolutely wonderful, were offered loads of money to spill the beans, but they didn't. And we used to put bits of fabric, lots of different colors in the bins, just to throw the journalists off the scent. The 25 foot long train was too big for our studio. The only place we could really try it on was at Buckingham Palace in one of the long corridors there. That was the first time we'd ever really seen her with the whole thing and that was very exciting. I don't think there was a mirror there actually, I don't think she saw herself. I think Diana used to love visiting. She would go upstairs and chat to all the seamstresses um, and explore the place. And when she came to the studio, we had all these dresses hanging on the rails. And that's, you know, with the black dress. Diana came in and tried it on and it looked so fabulous on her. She decided to wear it. It was literally just a sample. And she looked amazing. That was her first grown up dress. Up until that point, she'd been wearing these sort of very romantic, frothy, you know, pale colored, dresses and looking very demure. When she appeared in the black dress, it was the next stage of her development into a fashion icon, I think. So I put this scrapbook together to, just for me, really, memories. And there's lots of pictures of the behind the scenes, the making of the royal wedding dress, all memories that are so important. And also from a historical perspective, it catalogues every step of the way in the making of that dress. There's even a picture of my mum in here and my mum, did a lot of the embroidery as well because she was brilliant at, at that kind of stuff. My favorite picture is this. This one, it's me with Nina and it's the dress which is nearly finished but it hasn't got the frill around the neck and we're just stepping back. We're just taking a breather and looking at our work there and just thinking nearly done as we were getting closer to the big day. It just brings back such memories and that was 43 years ago time flies. <laughs> On the day was so exciting when we got her dressed at Clarence House, you know, putting her into the petticoat, this huge petticoat, and then slipping the dress over her head and trying not to damage the makeup or anything. After she, she put the dress on and it was a question of waiting for the carriage to draw up. And I remember that being a very silent time. Nobody was speaking as we were waiting for the carriage. You know, I think it was dawning on everybody. Reality hit at that point. The last time I saw Diana was at the Christie's auction in New York. I mean, that was packed full of people. I remember nearly tripping over Henry Kissinger. That was really funny. And I had a little chat with her and she was lovely and she looked radiant. Diana was a one in a million billion person. It was just so incredible. It was such an amazing honor to make her wedding dress. But the fact that, that it's still today, all these years later, people talk about it. And I think part of it is because of the photographs that were taken at the time. They were very dramatic. There's not been anything like that since. For my next project, I'm going to climb back into the time machine to try and capture the spirit of the original royal wedding dress but through my eyes now, 43, I think, years later, how I see it now. So I'm reimagining it. It's the sequel, which is going to be very exciting and fun. And um, I'm really looking forward to doing that. I'm doing some research now, coming up with lots of ideas. And it would be this year at some stage. It's a really exciting thing because I, I often get asked, well, would you do the same dress again? Well, I wouldn't change a thing on the dress in 1981. But if I was looking at it through my eyes now, there's so many possibilities.